Kangaroo Waste fans, it's uh, James once again from thefitrv.com and I'm here with another Black Tank Showdown. Um, for those of you who saw my first experiment, you kind of know what this is about, but for those of you who may not have, basically I've got a clear black tank and I'm going to test some products here. Today we're going to be testing some tank rinsing solutions. Um, so hearkening back to my first experiment, and if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link right up here. There'll be a link. Pause. Okay, we have a link. Um, I got a number of comments on my first experiment about things I could improve, and so I've taken some time to make some improvements, and I'm going to go over those first before we jump into the, uh, to the experiment. First, I had a number of people suggest that I may have gotten different results if I had a covered tank with a vent stack. Well, I got busy with my uh, clear plastic and I fashioned a cover. It fits on sort of snugly like that. There we go. It's not maybe exactly airtight, but it's enough so that it'll provide decent flow restriction. And I even put a little RV vent cover thing on the top. So there we go. I have a tank cover. Um, the second uh, critique I got was that, you know, a straight shot back into, the, uh, back into the black tank, that creates a pretty ideal solution for a lot of tank rinsers, but most of us don't have that. So there's no way I can test everyone's plumbing combination, but it's pretty easy for me to prevent a straight shot back into the tank. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a couple of clear elbows like this, or 45 degree elbows. And since my tank just uh, has an attachment like that, I'm going to attach them on right like that. Boom, no straight shot back into the tank. And that'll be used for all the different runs. Um, the next thing I got, and this really probably is an issue, but a number of folks said that my water pressure was ridiculously high, and it is, it's 120 PSI. So for the runs today, we've got an RV water pressure regulator. It's made by Camco, and I'm going to be using that and testing the pressure before each run. Um, the next thing, uh, a number of people said, you cut the toilet paper into dainty little strips. My wife doesn't use toilet paper that way. Point taken. Um, so instead of 40 strips or 40 sheets cut into strips, this time I'm going to cut 20 sheets of toilet paper into strips. I'm going to take 20 sheets and just kind of tear them up in five sheet chunks. And then I'm going to take 20 sheets in five sheet wads and just wad them up and put that all into the tank. So that's what I'm going to do there. Um, the next suggestion was, uh, you know, people wanted to know more about how exactly I conducted the experiment. So I'm going to make, I've made actually already, a test run sheet. And I'm going to use that, you know, to mark down times and temperatures and that sort of thing. And I'll make that available on the web page that will have this test on it. So beyond that, I'm going to run the test pretty much the same way I did last time with my same standard mixture of uh, simulated waste. That being mostly peanut butter, cornmeal, rice krispies, and other food products with a bizarre food coloring. And I think I'm going to go blue today. Um, so with that, uh, the four products we're going to test today. I'm going to make four runs. And please bear in mind, I'm only testing the rinsing performance, the tank rinsing, of these four different products. Um, I know there are other benefits like the sewer solution. You have a very clean hose, etc. I'm not testing that, just the rinsing. So with that said, the first thing I'm going to test, just like I did last time, is the sewer solution. The next thing I'm going to test is the RV Hydro Flush. This kind of goes on and flushes out the tank that way. This is another product that would work really well with a straight shot into the tank, but we don't have that anymore. But I'm going to test that. The next thing I'm going to test is the Flush King, which I actually don't have. So the Flush King really is nothing more than this with a valve attached to it so that you can actually close off the tank and kind of start filling the tank. So I didn't buy the Flush King because I already had a removable valve, but this and this is basically the same thing as the Flush King. And then the final product I'm going to test is the Tornado Rotary Tank Rinser. Now that required a little prep. I don't know if you can see, but I've already got it installed onto the, onto the uh, black tank and we're going to use that as the final run of the test. Now, I wanted to have a common rinsing procedure, so I looked at the manufacturer recommendations for all these. The only ones that really had any recommendations were the, uh, the sewer solution and the tornado. Um, and the tornado said rinse for two minutes or until clear, and the sewer solution didn't even really give a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a two minute rinse cycle. So I'm gonna rinse for two minutes, let it drain for two minutes, and then repeat. And I'm not going to do that any more than two times because I could sit there all day and maybe eventually get the tank completely spotless, but that's kind of not the point. Um, so with that said, I need to go get uh, to making some fake waste and then we'll get started.
So we're set up to run the first experiment using the sewer solution. I've added the standard stuff to the tank and I did it in an order which you'll be able to see in the list but I added it in the order that I'm going to add the same thing each time. Um, we've got the water ready to go. The tank's been sitting here for five minutes. So I'm just going to hook up the water. There we go. Get ready to time it. Turn on the water. All right, and we've got water flowing down into the sewer solution. And we're going to dump and go. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half and we're, uh, I don't know, about halfway done draining. So we're going to keep letting it go. But we are still getting, like we did in the last experiment, we are still getting this film left on the side of the tanks from the slow emptying. We'll see if that holds up when we start using the, uh, the three inch hose for the other dump method, or the other clean methods. It's uh, three minutes and this is pretty much run dry. So we're gonna turn the water off for a moment and have a look. Okay, so we finished dumping with the sewer solution um, with the lid on and there's quite a bit of stuff left here in the tank. Some larger chunks of stuff and uh, the sides are all covered with the film. We even can see over here, if you look, you can see the, uh, the kind of problem that you get with uh, standard probe kind of uh, tank sensors and that's that stuff gets stuck on them and we've had that happen here on the end of the screw that's on the, uh, the Tornado tank rinser. So that's done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up for a rinse. So now we're going to rinse using the sewer solution for two minutes. So I'm going to turn on the water and I'm going to direct it back into the tank. And I've got a lid this time so I'm not going to get covered in stuff. Okay, now this is kind of important. Something that I'm noticing here with the sewer solution, sewer solution is that now that I've put a couple bends in the plumbing, it's not really getting all the way back into the tank. There's just a very little bit of water you can see starting to back up into the tank, but it's nowhere near the forceful rinse that I had before. It is filling up a little, but nothing like it did the last time. Coming up on two minutes now, and I'm going to switch the sewer solution back to dump. And what we can see here is that there is uh, still quite a bit of material left in the tank. So even though it's not part of the test protocol, I did notice that it was starting to fill up the tank slowly enough. Um, but after two minutes, it hadn't even really gotten halfway full. So I'm going to let it go another time for a full five minutes, and then I'm going to call it on the sewer solution. So here we go again. Okay, it's been five minutes and something very interesting has happened. So if you look here where the sewer solution is running, you see just clear water. And so if you were dumping your tanks and looking here or looking at the end of the sewer solution, you would think, awesome, my tanks are completely clean. Nothing has come out of here in a while. But with these bends in the pipe, very little of the water has backed up into the tank. And the reason for that is I think the first time some piece of material got lo lodged in this, in this discharge hose and allowed the water to back up. But that didn't happen this time, and so since this hose is always open, the water never is backed up into the tank. So we've got this here, looks clean, but I'm going to shut it off and let's have a look in the tank. So this is what's still left in the tank. And this is after one two-minute rinse and after one five-minute rinse. It's just not taking anything out of the tank because it's continuously discharging through the discharge hose at the same time while you're trying to fill the tank. So that's as good as we're going to get with the sewer solution now that we've added a couple bends in the pipe. Okay, so that's going to do it for the sewer solution and yuck, I've got kind of a mess to clean out here. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll get started next with the RV Hydro Flush. Here we are, we're ready for run two. I've got the same mixture of stuff in the tank that I put in the exact same way. So now I've got a three inch hose hooked up and I've got the RV Hydro Flush hooked up as well. Um, so we're gonna dump with the three inch hose and then take a look and then we'll hit it with the Hydro Flush. So here we go. 
start and fire in the hole. Okay, after dumping with a standard three inch hose, this is what we have left and this is what the uh, hydro flush is gonna be working against. Um, all the large floating material got out, but uh, the stuff that had sunk to the bottom is still kind of sitting there. There's a bunch of muck down at the bottom. All right, it's time to put the lid back on and uh, check out the hydro flush. So tank's emptied. Now we're gonna hit it with the hydro flush. The water's already on. I've got the uh, vacuum breaker on there. And this is gonna work, I, my suspicion is, it's gonna work in much the same way that the sewer solution did, and that it doesn't have a straight shot, and the drain is open all the time, that it's not going to fill the tank. But we'll see. Here we go. There's the hydro flush in action, but as you can see looking up into the tank, not a lot coming back up into the tank. So not much to speak of here with the hydro flush, although it is doing probably a fantastic job of cleaning out that little bit of pipe. But there we go. Okay, and that's two minutes. And once again, if you were just looking at the hydro flush, or if you were looking at, you know, a clear section coming out of your, your waste tank, you would think, wow, my tanks are completely clean. I am good to go. And that's what it would be. But if you come and look in the tank, I mean, you can see that maybe a little bit of water splashes up to there, but really not much happens. I could let this run all day and the tank would not get any cleaner than what it is right now, which is, I think we can all agree, this is not quite clean. So once again, I have an awful mess to clean out of this tank and then we'll get going with the uh, Flesh King. Okay, and five minutes. So we're ready for our third run. And this one we're gonna use the, uh, well, it's called the Flush King, but I don't actually have a Flush King. So I wanna show you what I've done to simulate a Flush King. The big difference between the Hydro Flush and the Flush King is the addition of this blade valve. Now, the Hydro Flush doesn't have one, the Flush King does. So I just basically reversed the order of where I had the valve and the Hydro Flush, and now I'm simulating a Flush King. What this will allow me to do is it'll actually, I'll be able to close the valve again and be able to fill up the tank while I'm using the flush. So with that said, it's time to dump. So let me get ready to time that. And go. And we're at about a minute and seven, and that's pretty much drained all it's gonna drain. So let's have a look at what's inside. So the three inch valve is still open, but uh, at this point, this is what we've got left in the tank that the, uh, the Flush King is gonna attempt to work on. So with that said, let's uh, get ready to rinse. So we're ready to flush with the Flush King simulator. Um, so I'm going to close the blade valve, get ready to time it, and run it for two minutes. Now, come up here. Now you can see here, this is already starting to back up into the tank. So we're actually going to get some additional flushing action out of this setup. So we're going to let it run for the rest of the two minutes, and uh, then we'll drain again. Okay, there we are at two minutes, and let's just pop the lid off for a second so we can have a look. This is a 20-gallon tank, and I'd say that's a good uh, half to two-thirds of the way full after just two minutes with the Flush King. So something you're going to want to keep in mind if you're going to use it in this manner, is you're going to want to have someone inside to monitor the tank levels so you don't forget and absentmindedly, you know, blow water out the wrong side of your toilet. But let's open this up and have a look inside. So this is what we've got to work with. We're getting almost another full dump after just two minutes with the Flush King, or like a two-thirds dump. So with that, we're going to put the lid back on. And we're going to dump again.
Okay, so it's been two minutes and then we dumped it again. Let's have a look inside. You can see here that it's quite a bit cleaner than it was before. There's still some larger, I guess, heavier stuff that it, uh, that it hasn't moved, but by and large, it's, it's doing a better job of getting things out than maybe the other, uh, the other two that we've tried have. So I'm kind of coming to realize that with the Flush King, you could actually, if you left it on long enough, you could actually get another complete emptying of the tank with the Flush King. And just for good measure, I'm gonna do that now just to see kind of what you could realistically expect. You could keep doing this all day and get it a little bit cleaner each time. So I'm gonna try a one hole fill and then uh, we'll move on to the next one. So I'm gonna put the lid back on and fill it up. Now we're still filling this tank again, but I just wanna point something out. Once again, right here, the water is so clear. It's, it would be very deceiving if you were using one of these clear connectors to judge how clean your tanks were. Because as we saw, there's quite a bit of stuff still in the tank but this looks just crystal clear. Okay, so it took about three and a half minutes for the Flesh King or Hydro Flesh to fill a 20 gallon tank. So I'm gonna dump it again because what we've got here now basically, this is my second rinse, um, third dumping with this tank. It's gonna be almost a complete dump with uh, reasonably clean or cleaner water. So here we go. taking the lid off. Let's have a look. This is about the best that it could get with the uh, Flesh King type setup. So it's getting cleaner and notice it's going to continue to get cleaner with each successive rinse. Um, we still have this film kind of on the sides of the tank. It's just kind of weird. Um, and I guess there's uh, the other thing to notice there's some heavy larger material that's just uh, stuck there on the bottom of the tank and, and nothing's going to float it out. So but all in all, I'm going to say this is quite a bit cleaner than the first two things we tried. And so now I have to clean the tank again. And then we're going to get started with the, uh, the tornado. And I'm kind of most excited about that because it's very different from the other ones. So I got to get to work. And now we're ready to try testing out the tornado rotary tank rinser. This one works a little differently. So I've just got like one little clear elbow on here so we can see what's going, coming down the pipe. But the rest of that stuff I don't need down there. And um, I think everything's set. We're ready to go ahead and dump, so let's do that now. And I'll time it, but I know it's gonna take about a minute because I've done this four times already. Go. Okay, so that took about 55 seconds, and uh, let's have a look and see what we've got to work with. So here's the tank after being dumped with a three inch hose, but before running the, uh, the tornado rinser. Looks about like it did the other times. There's a fair amount of paper sludge up here. And um, we've got the tornado rinser mounted at the opposite end of the tank from the outlet, as instructed, about two inches down from the top of the tank. So I'm kind of excited because I tried it before and it kind of sprayed around, but I didn't try it inside the tank. So I'm kind of excited to see how this goes. Now, one thing in the Tornado Winter instructions, it says to only run it with the valve open. So we're going to try that for two minutes or until the water runs clear, as the instructions said. And then we'll, uh, we'll try something else. But for right now, we're going to try it with the valve open. So here we go. Three, two, one. Cool! Okay, so that's been two minutes and the water was actually running clear before the two minutes was up, but I let it go the two minutes. And already, before you even get and look in the tank, look at the sides of the tank. All the, other, uh, all the other dumpings we had, the sides of the tank were coated with this gooey, greasy film. And with the tornado, that seems to have been largely rinsed away. So now let's uh, have a look and see how well she did on the inside. 
This is a much better job than all the other solutions, I think. There's still some heavier stuff here, things that sink. I guess the lesson there is eat more fiber. Um, there's still some material here towards the outlet, but by and large, this is the cleanest we've got from a product right out of the gate. So I'm pretty impressed with the Tornado. Now, I mentioned that they said to only run the Tornado with the valve open, but seeing as we've got a clear tank and there's no danger of me overfilling the tank, I'm going to actually close the valve and run it again just to kind of see what sort of result we get from filling the tank a little bit and then draining it again. So I'm going to do that. So let's get to it. Okay, so one thing I've learned is that my lid is not watertight. Um, I don't know if that really matters because it's getting water all over the sides. Anyway, um, taking the time to fill the tank up most of the way with the, uh, using the Tornado. Now I'm going to dump again, and in about a minute we'll see how clean we got. Okay. Actually, not a whole heck of a lot different than the last time. I mean, there's less stuff, but uh, by and large, it's, it's kind of about as clean as it was last time. But still, I'm going to say the performance of the Tornado seems to be, at least uh, I'll have to go back and look at the rest of the footage, but so far this seems to be topping the field. So with that, we're going to call it a day here at the uh, sewer clean out. <laughs> I'm going to go inside and have a look at the footage and uh, wrap it up. Thanks. Okay, it's the next day. I've had a chance to think about it, to look at some of the footage, and it's time to draw some conclusions. But before I do that, I want to show you four pictures. These pictures represent the cleanest I could get the tank using each of the four methods that we tested. Now, this is multiple flush and dump cycles, so here we go. First picture I'm going to show you is the sewer solution. And yuck, I think we can all agree that's really not very clean at all. Second picture I'm going to show you is from the RV Hydro Flush. And that's not really all that clean either. Third picture is from the Flush King. And now we can see that things are starting to look like you would expect after a tank rinse. And the fourth one, this is the Tornado Rotary Tank Rinser. And that's really starting to look like something that you could probably live with. So what kind of conclusions can we draw from all this? Well, the first conclusion I'm drawing is that the plumbing configuration makes a huge difference and how well a tank rinsing system is going to work. Now, if you've got a straight shot from your, from your drain valve back into your black tank, hooray for you, but almost nobody does. I don't even have that. Um, if you've got even just a couple little 45 degree elbows, as we saw in this video, it really makes a big difference in how well you're gonna be able to flush out the tank. So, first, first conclusion is everyone needs to crawl under their RV and know what sort of plumbing they've got leading to the drain. Second conclusion is that if you've bought a clear section to add on to your drain waste plumbing, it's probably lying to you. In all the runs we did, we saw that the water in the clear section was showing clear well before the tank was empty of stuff. So if you've got a clear section added onto your drain plumbing, don't trust it. Um, the third conclusion is that the drain end flush systems, the ones that don't have a valve to allow you to shut off the flow of water out of the tank, those are pretty much worthless. Um, unless you've got a straight shot back into the tank, what we saw is that without being able to shut the flow out of the tank off, they just kind of rinse out the few inches of pipe right near the drain and lead you to believe that your tank is clean when it's not. Again, straight shot back into the tank changes things. Um, fourth conclusion is that even the drain end systems that allow you to shut off the flow into the tank, like the Flush King or the Flush King Simulator, that's really no more effective, in my opinion, than just filling your tank in any other way. You could sit there with a, with a hose and just pour water into your toilet, and the flushing performance you're going to get from that is going to be pretty identical to what you're going to get from the Flush King. So if you're fortunate, like, like we are, and you've got a bathroom lavatory that's plumbed into your black tank, use that as a way to fill the tank, save the money, don't bother with the, with the flushing systems. Um, fifth conclusion is it the Tornado Rotary Tank Rinser? And I'm just going to, by extension, implicate all installed in the tank rinsing systems. Well, that's the only one that did a decent job at all 
especially of clearing the walls of that film that was on them. And all the, all the runs had like this greasy film. Only the tornado got that off. So that's something to think about. If you've got a installed in your black tank flushing system, use it. You saw what it does. It does well. And then I guess the final conclusion I've got is if there's something in your tank that's heavy enough to sink to the bottom, doesn't seem like any kind of flush system is going to get that out. So that was kind of random. You can maybe ignore those kinds of things that you saw in the test. But that does lead me into what I believe is going to be my next test, and that's going to be a tank additive, something to break up the waste and help make it easier to remove. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Um, see you next time. This is James from the Fit RV. Bye.